Hello everyone. I'm going to be talking about the explicit use of scope. Scope is one of the more complicated concepts in programming that the R interface makes easy. Scope in essence indicates where certain objects can access certain parts of other objects and the rules governing that. So if you were to say, hey, look at A, well can A and tell A to grab something from B, can A grab something from B? Is that allowed? That's what scope determines. R makes things very easy because it allows you to fetch things that aren't explicitly in the scope. So if you can imagine, let's say we have a sandbox, and you tell A, A, go fetch B within the sandbox. For R, if B is not in that sandbox, it will go outside of that sandbox within the bigger park to find B. This is very convenient and makes for very quick writing of code. However, when A is looking out there, looking for B, it comes at a significant cost. So I recommend that you explicitly use scope by passing an object or declaring it within a function. Here are two codes that I used, and the way these codes work is that based on some random data that's inputted into the variables, it collects a condition. And if that condition is verified, then that condition changes in turn and becomes a random variable. Now if you'll see in syntax 1, I'm using the double arrow sign to redeclare the condition as a random variable. In syntax 2, I'm using e, which has already been declared within the function. So in syntax 1, the R is going to be searching for condition within the scope of your work session, while in syntax 2, e is already declared in the environment, so it's okay. When you do a system.time comparison, you see that syntax 2 is 13% faster than syntax 1. Another feature that is very characteristic of R is to vectorize. R is really known to be very slow over loops, especially nested loops. The reason for this is that R is an interpreted language as opposed to a compiled one like C and Fortran. Vectorization allows us to avoid using loops explicitly in R. Instead, we iterate the loop over a compiled language by using R as an interface. And this is really where R is the strongest, is you get to use all the benefits of the R syntax in the R environment while still using the speed of lower level language. So my recommendation is only use loops when the desired result is conditional upon the previous iteration of that loop. That is, only use a loop in R when the result of a previous loop determines how that next loop is interpreted. So in this example, I'm going to be creating a vector from 1 to 10,000. And syntax 2 just sums up that vector. And syntax 1 uses a manual for loop to collect that vector. And when we look at the system.time comparison, it's not even a competition. This time savings is just enormous. So really, you should only use vectorized operations. Another thing you can do for R to speed it up is to simplify data structures. R has various data structures, and many of those roles can overlap. So you have vectors, factors, matrices, arrays, data frames, lists. There are also structured data structures from other packages. One thing that I found is that data frame can be substantially slower than a matrix ob object. One trick that I've used often is passing from a smaller data structure to a larger one that you can save time because the larger one does not need to be called every time. So if you could imagine, Imagine you're a conductor of a large band, and you're trying to test how the band plays. It's much easier to test them individually and gauge the response than to do it collectively. Always use a simple data structure that gets the operation done. We're going to have three syntaxes this time. Syntax 3, syntax 2, and syntax 1. And there's going to be two stages to this. The first stage, syntax 1 uses a data frame. Syntax 2 uses a matrix, and syntax 3 uses a data frame and a vector. So the difference between syntax 1 and syntax 3 is that syntax 3 uses two different kinds of objects, while syntax 1 only uses one. And if you compare the system to the times, you'll see that syntax 3 is actually the quickest. Now most of the jump is between syntax 1 and syntax 2, but syntax 3 is also substantially quick, because you don't need to call the data frame each time you're doing the multiplication. Another thing you can do to speed up R is to incorporate packages. This is one of the strongest features of R, 
because it's really things come to R first. It's really incredible how fast R updates and implements new algorithms. Chances are people have written a package that's trying to do what you're trying to do and people have thought the way you are. So I highly suggest you just spend a few minutes looking up and making sure that what you're trying to implement hasn't already been implemented. So yes, you should use these packages. So the difference between Syntax 1 and Syntax 2 is Syntax 2 uses a well algorithm. I'm not going to get into the details, but it's a random number generating algorithm that I happen to like much more than the standard R random number generating algorithm. When you compare system.time, you can see that the new implemented algorithm is 66% faster. One feature that's been built into the newer versions of R is the compiler package. The compiler package can convert R functions to bytecode objects that are then compiled. This package is now incorporated into the standard R build, and honestly, it's really, really neat. It really is the closest thing to a free lunch. That's why I recommend that you always compile functions before use. Here is my effort to create a rolling dice function and to see how rolling the dice compiled as opposed to uncompiled will result in time savings. So when we compare the system.time, you'll see that syntax 2 is about 8% faster than syntax 1. And this is typical of the compiler package. The, mo the largest savings, savings that I've personally seen is about 20%, and that's uh, functions with many, many loops. The smallest ones I've seen are, are very, pretty much insignificant. That being said, it's always better to use it than not. So, what can we conclude from this? R can be reasonably fast without abandoning the features that make it powerful. For instance, development time, which is substantially faster than R. The only thing you need to do to achieve this is to really get good habits. And these habits are much transferable elsewhere. You can use them in other languages. You can use them for UML modeling. You can use them for project design. These habits are really useful in sitting down and thinking, OK, what do I want to do? How do I want to do it? And what's the best way that I can achieve it? Most of these operations are very, very simple, and most people should be able to reliably produce fast R code. Probably the biggest lesson that you can conclude from this is that you don't need to go into complex development. R is designed so that you don't have to develop complexly, so you really shouldn't.